podcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Viewers and listeners, this is an, uh, on the basis of our Argento, we made an effort to uh, come together um, from different parts of this world uh, as we have very emergence um, subject matter going on and have the request of, to host this uh, session. Uh, welcome viewers uh, to our uh, session and, to, and thanks to stay with us. Um, and uh, we will be having our guest uh, from uh, distant remote area uh, in from Bangladesh, which is in, in the Rohingya camp. And uh, be patient with us and they will be giving some very uh, current situations and how they are feeling and everything they will be discussing. And be with us patiently and for being patient, we are thanking you in advance. And we will be having a, a very strong resource uh, discussing regarding the election of Pakistan that happened on Thursday and the results and what's going on there and what they are thinking, uh, these stakeholders and how they are going to uh, solve their uh, uh, after election problems, forming the government and all this stuff. And we do have a, a very important guest, Mr. Uh, Merul Kamdar. He is a journalist for a long time and uh, also, he's a very specialist on political analyst uh, for South Asia and some part of the Middle East. And uh, also, we have our guest uh, from Sindh Foundation, Sindh uh, human rights uh, activist, Mr. Manwar Sufi Lagari. Very prominent name in the uh, Sindh community, and he traveled worldwide, and recently he came back from um, Africa, Geneva, all those areas. And also he uh, conducted a very important walk for Sindh population in Washington, D.C. Uh, in this few day, few weeks ago. So we are having now very important guest. And as all agrees, I want to right now start with Mr. Peter. Uh, I wanted to start with Mr. Peter. Uh, Mr. Peter, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, all of uh, our guests are welcome uh, to our this important session. And actually, I do host uh, two other sessions on Sunday, uh, on Saturday and Wednesday night. Uh, but this is an important, urgent uh, call. And uh, within the short time, Mr. Uh, Mehul and Mr. Manuel Lagari and Mr. Peter has responded, and I'm. Uh, I'm so sure that I'm so lucky that I got you uh, and I welcome you guys. Uh, let me start uh, from the uh, from Mr. Peter Seifel. Uh, Mr. Peter, and uh, can you tell me like uh, which location of the uh, Rohingya Bangladesh and Myanmar border Rohingya camp, which location you are in there? So. Good morning, uh, everyone here, and thank you for giving me this uh, a chance to speak here today. And my English may not be clear. Please uh, ask me question if it is not clear to you. So, you are okay. Uh, so thank you for giving me this chance. Uh, so I'm currently living in the uh, staying in Kutupalong, uh, the world largest refugee camp in Bangladesh. So it is uh, under the Cox's Brother district in Ukia Upazala. So a place called Kutupalong which is known as camp number two e so it is next to the border uh, uh we uh, we can hear uh, how, the border how far how far is the border from your camp it is less than uh, 1 kilometer less than 1 kilometer from the camp so okay. we can see even it is it, it, it when uh, it, uh, the conflicts happen and happen in the uh, the bombing and motor shell they, so we can hear the uh, sound the explosive sound from uh, how shelter. far how far is the location that very recently two three days ago one shell uh, uh, damaged a uh, dwelling house and where uh, two people were died and 
uh, at least more than five people were injured. Yeah, it is uh, a place called uh, Jalpai Toli. So it is, uh, I, I check on a map, it is uh, likely uh, five kilometers away from uh, my shelter. So, and uh, so it is next to the border, the, the shelter is next to the border uh, beside. So, uh, can you give, can you give some uh, sufferings uh, situation of uh, like a picture of those, uh, what are happening after the shell where these people went and uh, how they are uh, having their life right now? So basically, uh, the, the war or the conflict started uh, on 4th uh, February, the midnight. So we, uh, I was sleeping in general. Uh, I sleep very lately because I have a class on online in USA. So I follow up with the USA time. So uh, suddenly I, I have been hearing uh, big sounds of like explosive sound. So I went out and uh, tried to know what is the sound because in general, every night in the camps, this kind of sounds are, it, it's become very uh, ordinary in general. Uh, so I wanted to know what is happening. So I check up uh, to the Facebook and uh, came to know that this is happening in the border. And also it's becoming bigger and bigger. And I have a news page, I have a local uh, Facebook page. So I tried to post it there and uh, the, audio, the sound, big explosive sound. So uh, so it, uh, the, it started uh, like, 12 uh, 3 1, 1 a.m midnight and it's is continuously uh, day uh, it, it happened it was continuous for days and also uh, it, so we come to know that this was big between aa arkan army and the uh, janta uh, government so uh, so aa trying to take control of the areas so janta is against them so at the at the end the situation of the border became worse than we can imagine because it is likely one or two kilometers less than one kilometer away those who are living in the border uh, it is you may imagine what is what what was the situation What's going on right, right now right and uh, well, like uh, do you know anybody that uh, they had to move from there and uh, yeah. now where they are so from the border, because of the safety issues, uh, the government or local uh, authorities ordered to they uh, replace, relocated to a safe place uh, for just for uh, because of uh, the situation. So uh, I have uh, speak yesterday. I speak uh, with a man I know. He was living. He's uh, he was living in the border side. Uh, so he he worked as a uh, security. Uh, so and he 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 explained that. His family is uh, uh, he is away from his family uh, some days because of the uh, situation, so they cannot live at the at their shelters uh, at that in, area. Okay, yeah. you now uh, as you said, like uh, there are some local journalists that they wanted to join with us. Uh, I will be coming to you um, uh, after some updates, uh, and uh, in the meantime, if you can connect those people, so those, those journalists that uh, they are giving uh, their courageous time over there and efforts um so we we like to have uh, more in detail and by this time now i will be going to mr lagari uh, regarding the election um uh, regarding the election of pakistan that happened already been uh, completed and they um, gave the results also so in detail mr lagari uh, mr lagari i wanted to hear from you and uh, please unmute yourself first Thank you, uh, Mr. Amar Islam, and thank you, Millennium uh, 24 Hour News uh, Channel. And I'm uh, very glad that uh, this is the second time you are having me. And uh, I very appreciate that. Uh, be happy thank you so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Uh, so I, I want to. Uh, uh, let me let me ask you from your own region mm -hmm. that uh, in a scene, how many seats were there, and then how many seats came for the um, uh, uh, ex uh, prime minister Imran Khan's backed um, you know uh, independent candidates, and how many seats uh, in scene um, that uh, Mr. Bilwal Bhutto Jardari got from PPP? Well, the in the 
actually National Assembly seats uh, PPP got the 54 seats uh, okay. uh, and the overall and then uh, MQM uh, Pakistan got the 17 seats and PTI overall got the 92 seats uh, over the uh, but in the Sindh, uh, the uh, provincial situation is the PPP is 84 and the MQM is 28 and PTI independence is 13 and others got the four. So this is the situation, basically uh, the parties, uh, uh, as you know that the uh, PTI and not the as a, a party didn't uh, run the election, but uh, as the supported by independent, uh, supported by PTI but uh, they run as a independent but the situation is very controversial uh, overall uh, in pakistan and especially uh, uh, punjab and in the military this is the not the new situation it is happening i, I heard state. that some uh, khyber uh, khyber place uh, they are already the civilians or the supporters of a ex uh, prime minister mr imran khan um, you know, they are already uh, in conflict with uh, the uh, other side. Yes, not only Pakhtun uh, Khwa, but even just uh, before joining this uh, interview, I read in the newspaper that in Islamabad, one PTI former member of parliament, uh, he was gunned down. And hmm. uh, yes, this is the uh, beginning. Uh, so is song. he in, uh, seriously injured or... He, he, he died. He's gone down and uh, not just uh, injured, but uh, he was killed. And uh, also in the Sindh province, the major, uh, uh, the you know that Pir Pagado, Pir Sabtula Shah, his grandfather was uh, very pro-independence of the Sindh. And uh, during the British time, they hang him and even we didn't found his body. And his party, Pir Pagado's alliance is called GDA. They also gave the call for the protest uh, on 16th uh, of the uh, this month, and mm -hmm. also they announced that the very first day, when the provincial assembly take the oath, they are going to be forfeited. Means they will be uh, uh, also going to the protest, and Jamaat Islami is also going to do the protest too. So this is the situation where the in Sindh especially where uh, PPP got the uh, manipulated uh, election and rigging and uh, controversial. This is the overall situation in Pakistan, but especially I'm just like from the Sindh. Like uh, which, which, uh, which province is more, uh, more under conflict? Well, basically more conflict is in Balochistan because over there the gorilla fighting and uh, they, there is no interest in the election and uh, the uh, that's why i would call this people have no faith in the election it's like a illegitimate uh, i mean domestic and international media said this is a lot of riggings and controversies and illegitimate and uh, one more important things which i would like to mention here after the bangladesh like in bangladesh it was not managed the election so sheikh uh, banglabandhu uh, he got the uh, 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 landslide uh, victory of the, yeah. at that time, yes. And, and Bhutto's uh, party got 82 seats. And I was reading that one Bangladesh, our friend, uh, someone uh, mentioned the tweet that imagine if that time the majority of the, uh, uh, the seats which got the uh, win the election, the Pakistani military didn't allow them to run the country, then country is broken. And the same situation is now in Pakistan that the Imran Khan uh, is in the jail and uh, 31 years uh, sentences and he didn't got this. Uh, one more, uh, one more question I wanted to ask you: like, uh, what is the like, uh, which province is having majority of Mr. Imran Khan's supporters of course, and the seats uh, that won't? Well, in Punjab is also 138. He got 138 seats. Punjab. In Punjab, where the Nawaz Sharif uh, fully supported by the military, but in in the military is also now groups. I think some may be supporting to the uh, Imran Khan and some supporting to the Punjab, uh, the Nawaz Sharif. So that's why the Zardari in the scene very much uh, negotiations in uh, and they got the uh, manipulate and got many seats uh, in Sindh. So 
I think, uh, but Pakhtun Khawa, of course, he's going to, uh, Imran Khan is going to make, uh, supported by the independence and uh, it's, uh, but military is very powerful and they don't want to resolve the problem. They want to keep the, as it is the country it is. So you, you see that like, uh, what is the, uh, what is the possibility of coalition government? Well, allegedly, you Nawaz, say some, the, one of the one of the options. Yeah, that is the already Nawaz Sharif and uh, Zardari. They are uh, sitting and negotiating, and they already principally agreed they are going to make the coalition. But that will be the hung parliament. It will be like a very weak government. And then I I am sure that Pakistan will not get much investment from the outside. Economy will be weak and uh, they will be not in the position to talk the IMF. So the country is going to be more problems instead of getting the stability, I think more instability, and uh, especially in Pakhtunkhwa and Pakistan, uh, but now is in the Punjab. Problem is also where the uh, PAP and Imran Khan and Nawaz Sharif uh, are uh, like not in the position to be sit down together. And uh, even if the military can try, but it is not possible. So I think uh, this will be more crisis. Do you mean to say that like the people of the supporters of uh, uh, Mr. Ex Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan is very strong down to the street right now? Like oh, yes, they have committed not to leave the street, something like that is very like a uh, it's very hard for them to go back. Like, uh, is it is it the the, the momentum that uh, they achieve already? I think that will be kind of the momentum is going to be happen. Even military try to manage this election, but they are unable to manage it. Right. So it's like an Arab Spring, like in Tunis, uh, happened uh, something in that is the possible in Pakistan. Uh, the supported by Imran Khan uh, in Punjab and in Pakhtunkhwa. And at the same time, the other nationalist movement, like a PTI in uh, a, a Pashtun movement uh, over there, uh, the uh, in uh, Pashtun areas and Baloch areas, the Baloch people is also not on the uh, in that situation to control by military. So all those provinces is already problem. But now the problem in Punjab can be going to be erupt, and the situation cannot be controlled. So right. it's and, must, uh, let me let me go to Mr. Uh, Mahul Kamdar. Um, he has got very experience, um, you know, uh, political experience and journalism, and always he is very update. And uh, Mr. Mahul Kamdar, if you please uh, unmute yourself first. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, welcome to our show again. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, like uh, uh, my question is uh, to your experience, uh, which direction? There are three options. Either they form the government by coalition uh, or uh, the majority. Uh, if the, uh, the question of majority comes, the majority comes towards uh, the ex-prime minister, Mr. Imran Khan supported candidates, right? Whether they will be able to form any uh, political party or they will be, uh, what form of things that they are trying to do or what is the possibility they can do? Uh, sir, uh, you know, my observations are on the night of the counting, Mr. Nawaz Sharif was at his uh, party headquarters and, uh, you know, he left without making an announcement, which was very, very rare. Neither did he say that I have won, nor did he say I have lost. He just went home and a little while later, he came back over there and he made a speech saying that he wanted peace with India and he was willing to work with anybody, which was a hint that he wanted a coalition. So obviously the message has gone to him that even with the military support, he is not in a position to win outright. So he has got okay. that position. In the meantime, there have been rumors from within Pakistan that several military leaders met Mr. Imran Khan inside the prison. And uh, maybe they smuggled it out or I don't know how else it came out. There has been a message which has been circulated telling, uh, you know, Pakistan Tehreek and Saf, uh, uh, Mr. Imran Khan's party members, to get ready for full-fledged street protests. Now, street pro protests are something that Mr. Imran Khan perfected a few years ago. He kept losing elections, but then the military helped him and he won. Uh, but uh, uh, it looks like this time he is on the other side. So he's going to take them against the military. 
uh, in the hope that he will win. So where it will lead, to be honest, I don't know. But uh, in general, there's two observations I'll make. One is during the elections, this one ha uh, was not as violent as some previous elections in Pakistan. There was one bomb blast in Balochistan, which killed about 28 people. But otherwise, by and large, it has been peaceful. Uh, following the elections, with this kind of manipulation, I don't know what will happen. Because I talked to a very senior uh, politician in Pakistan just a few hours ago. And what I was told was that the young over there are extremely frustrated with the level of corruption that has been there. They are all mainly supporters of Imran Khan, but this politician himself was very dismissive of Imran Khan. And he said that man is simply not intelligent enough. So that was a polite way of, you know... <laughs> Uh, but but, but you down. see, in a uh, well, right. Uh, but you see, in a democratic country, uh, it's very important to have a uh, public support, right? Uh, without absolutely, being, and and if he is, uh, if somebody is saying that he is uh, actually his background was not politician, but uh, he is long time now in politi uh, politics. So, um, uh, but gathering knowledge, he must have a very good uh, uh, advisors um, with him. So that part can be taken care of. I don't think so. Like uh, that can be any stigma for his forming a government where he has got the majority of seats, uh, though backed by him, like uh, the individuals. Now, the thing is, if he wants to form a government, then uh, which way he should go, whether he should go to the court um, to get, regain his uh, party position, um, uh, those he have, uh, uh, you know, uh, banded, uh, stopped their uh, his party, so he can regain that uh, through the uh, through the court. Uh, he can go to the court and ask for that, since it is established that the majority uh, backed by him, the candidates got the seat. People supported that, right? That's that's another question. Like uh, his his winning the election is uh, noticeable. Uh, so uh, finding that one and having that in uh, on a table, uh, I think uh, uh, ex Prime Minister Mr. Imran Khan can go to the court uh, for uh, regaining his party position. He can go to the court, sir. Right? The courts are, you know, the courts in Pakistan are known to sometimes operate to the instructions of the army or to the orders of the army as the. But still, but uh, 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 still, I, we can we can look into that. Uh, he he should go to the court. He yes, should go to the court, absolutely. right? He should go to the court. Absolutely. What court is going to do? I don't have to think about it. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Also, he need you know, to, I'll add to that. I'll right, add to he need to fact. knock the door. He knew it need to knock the door of the court and push yes. the door and get in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll also add a little, uh, you know, a perspective in the sense that, you know, the fact is that despite the uh, Pakistan's very powerful army doing its best to prevent Imran Khan from winning, he has got the majority of the votes. So they have not been able to even the uh, uh, the power of the military yeah, has there, not been it, enough it, to it, silence it, his voters. Yeah, this is a very, a very important issue. That a, when a country is having a military-backed government, like always the military is, you know, uh, on the top as an umbrella, uh, there might happen something. But you know, when the uh, general public don't accept it, then something bad happens to the nation. So I think this is the moment. This is the moment that everybody should uh, look into the matter and come across and solve the problems in their in, in their own country, right? Uh, Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mr. Munawar. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mahul Kamdar, and uh, stay with us. And I'm coming back with you. And uh, we will have a very short break, very small break, and then coming back. Mr. Munawar, same question, same question to you, but get ready for that. Maybe we don't need rest a uh, short break. <laughs> uh, all right. Viewers in America and around the world.
Welcome to today's America. This is your host, Tafar Arnoor, from our national studio. Viewers, every week we are bringing today's America, your boys, your rights, American rights, minority rights, colorful people rights. Watch today's America. Every single week, Millennium News 24, we are on globally, all smart TVs, Sony, Samsung, LG, also jagobd.com. Globally, we are on Horizon Satellite, locally on, we are all cable network, our website, millenniumnews24.com, millenniumtv24.com. Whatever you are, stay, peace, love, and happiness. Stay with Millennium News 24. Uh, viewers and listeners, so we are back to you uh, again, and uh, thank you for being with us um, uh, and stay with us. And in the meantime, I wanted to thank the uh, host. Uh, of the, the uh, who make this wonderful arrangement, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Muhammad Noor. He's the CEO of this channel. And also I do thanks to our uh, technical help from Bangladesh and in New York, uh, those who are giving their efforts and helping us on an urgent call. Uh, hope, viewers, we are with you again. And my question goes to Mr. Manoar Lagari. Yes, as uh, yes. What do you think about like how how it can be solved by because keeping in mind that military is there maneuvering yes. the power, right? So they have their own interest, whom they can coordinate as a political party, but the ex-Prime Minister, Mr. Imran Khan backed candidates are majority. But one stigma is they don't belong to any party right now, formally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I said, that's the only one option in between if they can go to the court and come up with the suggestions or they can regain that we want to get back our political party position so that uh, that can happen one way. Uh, or from the court, they can come up with a, uh, though it is maybe not possible, maybe possible It's the, if the court allows, it can happen. Having a time extension for um, hearing election hearing and all this stuff and regaining the position of political party of Mr. Imran Khan. Mr. So what, is your, what is your assessment? My, my assessment, that even if they go to the court, court is also not uh, like free court. It's the kangaroo court and it's controlled by Pakistani military. That is things is also in Imran Khan's mind too. But the Imran Khan part, they already actually, when they went to the election, they said that go even they not get the bet, uh, their symbol, they not get as a party, but they expose them. And as I mentioned earlier, that in Pakistan, only one election during the Bangladesh time that was not, that was unmanaged. Otherwise, all election after the 1971, it, is, was, it, was, it was managed by totally controlled. So it's a controlled democracy. It's not a democratic country. And I, I don't think that even uh, when they, uh, the election time, the Pakistani military was thinking that kind of the results is going to be happen. It has happened. It is not managed properly managed. So now the situation, I think uh, even if they want to resolve, they cannot be resolved. Pakistan, all these problems are not resolvable. I wonder why? Because the relationship between the center and the province relationship between among the parties, relationship between the parties and with the military, 
is all mess. It's a, it's a kind of the mess, it's a puzzle which is not solvable, cannot be solved. And now what is the situation? It's only because uh, where we are, the America is the most powerful country until they are not interfered and controlled to the Pakistan. Yeah, government. but the Western Western government said that the election was uh, uh, not fair. Uh, exactly. So uh, uh, I don't want to name that, as you said, like, you know, uh, they, they also are not uh, supporting the process the way election happened. Absolutely. You see, the internet was off, right? It was. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the uh, grievous part. Like you know, communication was down, um, and uh, it should not be done. Exactly. So then you see, and, and even after that, many of the people, the uh, the seats, were uh, people who failed. Like even the MQM, many people they were not. Okay, Mr. Lagari, I will be coming back to you uh, again for one or two, three minutes, and Mr. Rahul Kamdar, I will be coming back to you um, uh, again. Uh, please stay with us, and uh, let me Thank go you. to Mr. Peter right now for some updates. Uh, like uh, Mr. Peter, please unmute yourself. Hi, Mr. Peter. Uh, thank you for being with us. And what is the update? Uh, what is the update uh, right now? Like, uh, what is the situation really going on there uh, regarding the? Uh, you have heard that you know. Uh, Handed over, um, handed over um, uh, military uh, took shelter into Bangladesh area, right? And then uh, they surrendered over here. And then what is the situation right now? And what is the update that you have from that locality? So yeah, uh, as uh, as the news mentioned, there are the three hundred thirty BZP. They took shelter to the in Bangladesh. So, but Bangladesh uh, government is trying to send them back to the Burma, and uh, as as I read on the newspaper, uh, they have a uh, yeah they have a deal or they are try uh, Bangladesh tried to send them through the airplane, but uh, uh, Nepiru uh, re refused. Uh, maybe they are trying they are now sending through the sea. So, uh, uh, as it said, uh, a ship is waiting to the uh, international uh, sea border. Uh, to enter the Bangladesh and to receive them. So, but the the situation of the Burma, if I want to say, uh, just for just for with some information, what is happening and what I'm receiving from Hyokto uh, in IDP camp. So last night there was a, a bombing to the areas, which which resulted nine uh, individuals uh, de died and many in, in, injured. So as it is said. Uh, uh, there are lack of medicines, lack of food uh, crisis. So I am receiving a uh, message from the, the ground uh, of Keoktos, uh, a village name Pe uh, Pekte. So things are happening there and the situation of the, uh, in Rakhine state is the same there. So uh, everything, uh, people are playing here and there because of the situation. And if we see the border side also the same, uh, in Bangladesh uh, local, uh, people they have to go. Uh, they have to leave their own house and uh, take in shelter in schools or, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. can you tell me that uh, is there any roads and uh, no, roads are uh, blocked or damaged by the bombings or something like that? It's uh, the carriers are not being able to go uh, or uh, having a lack of uh, access uh, to the uh, people to uh, for the help. Here in Bangladesh or Burma? And, uh, in Bangladesh and Burma, both sides. Because in Bangladesh side also, it is a little bit affected over there, right? Yeah. But uh, the routes are not blocked yet here in, in Bangladesh. But in the in, in the kind of state or Burma, uh, we see uh, uh, almost the routes are blocked. Uh, people cannot even move to one, one area to another area. And the uh, internet is off and they are turning off and uh, they are sometimes they are uh, giving a uh, restore in the internet so every everything so uh, so that under their control under the control of chanta so uh, do you have any knowledge about the um, the access of the un help that uh, uh, can be reached there already there uh, as i uh, one of my uh, source my friend from uh, mangdo said that 
uh, even the NGOs work are like NGOs or INGOs worker are fleeing, trying to escape of the situ of the situation. Uh, even though uh, some people uh, non NGOs who are not from UN, uh, they are using the logos of e UN uh, just to show that uh, the AA or the Janta they don't boom the to them. So uh, instead of helping to the victims, so the staffs are actually busy to save themselves. So I don't think uh, the AUN and other aid agencies are there to help the victims. So I think this is the moment for UN to uh, create some area, a safe area over there, as per Absolutely. the as we uh, as we know, it's a Red Cross area, right? And uh, so that the normal people, civilians, can take the shelter over there. And uh, since it is a you know UN area, that uh, that has to be marked with. Don't you think so? This is the urgency right now. Absolutely. So it is very urgent. The people there, and uh, also uh, I read uh, that the the Rohingya who are who are in the Burma now, in in uh, random areas of the Rakhine state, they are they are trying to flee. They they are trying to come back in Bangladesh, come in enter to the Bangladesh and busy be uh, till now. There are 137. Uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh the, already have a million Rohingyas in the camp already, right? So exactly. this is a, this is an uh, overburden and access. Uh, it's um, uh, like uh, I, I I know the Bangladesh uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, uh, daughter of the father of the nation, Bangabundi Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, uh, took a very a great step, you know, um, a decades ago to give the shelter of. Uh, um, firstly, she gave the shelter and made the shelter area uh, habitable for them for five five lakh, and then after that, now it is attaining one million. Everybody is saying that. So, um, do you think that like it is possible to take more and more? Um, and uh, what will be the condition? Uh, will be the camp? Uh, the existing people are there. So yeah, it is. It is really. Praiseworthy uh, that Bangladesh is hosting uh, nearly one million Rohingya when uh, we are Bangladesh is almost overpopulated country. So it is uh, we feel very lucky uh, that we can stay uh, and we are here on the ground of Bangladesh. But at the same time, and when the people at uh, the situation because of the situation with the people of the Rohingya who are in the Arakan, so even if they try to escape. But I don't think it is uh, it is possible to receive more Rohingya when even Bangladesh is also uh, we, we we want to go back to our own country. We don't sure. want to lose. Sure. But at the same time, when uh, it's time to return home, to go home back, and uh, but these people who are in the Arkan or Rakhine, they are coming back. So it's it's same. Uh, yeah, I think it is not not uh, good but at the same time because of the life uh, it is a uh, matter of life matter of uh, yeah so people so are question uh, question mr peter uh, like uh, since uh, this camp is full of uh, like, uh, rohingyas they are being given the shelter and all this stuff at this moment how uh, they should help uh, to mitigate mitigate this uh, crisis to uh, take care of the crisis on your part also, I think you can do. Um, you or your uh, those who are in a shelter in the um, uh, in the camp, uh, they can act something to help the Bangladesh government and to reduce the tension in the border. Don't you think so? Uh, uh, the problem is a the people who are in the Rakhine now. So ARA, the Arkan Army or the opposite party of the opposite group, they are taking shelter into the uh, Rakhine or the shelter, uh, houses of uh, Rohingyas in the in the Rohingya village, village. So they are taking shelter there and they're fighting from that area. So uh, uh, Janta or the government are thinking that this this uh, Rohingya are fighting against us. So we have to. Uh, we have to uh, take action against them. As, as a result, they are booming to the villages. And uh, and uh, I understand that. I understand that. But uh, uh, what I'm uh, asking is, like, uh, if say, like, uh, uh, for example, a, a, a saline is needed, 
can be inside the camp voluntarily. They can create some of those work to help those people are in need. Like because uh, if you if somebody wait for the UN help, then uh, it is late, right? It's getting delayed. Right. But uh, in the meantime, if your own people can help that, you know, uh, to uh, to help in the inside the camp and also to create those commodities, salines, and other needful things, yeah. uh, you know, gathering foods and you know, the, all those voluntary activities for the humanity reason, right? That also yeah. might help those who are in a uh, bad situation right now. Yeah, in the absolutely. border area, maybe that side or this side. Absolutely. So a, a, as an example, I can use an example that uh, th there was a, a massive fire in the camp, which is known as a Camp 5. So they, every, all uh, nearly 10,000 shelters were burned down by the fire. And I, uh, I, 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 I was very pleased to see that uh, this is the first time that Rohingya come forward to stand each other beside each other and help each other uh, with whatever they had. E even though these people are, we we do Rohingya are relying on eight dollars to ten dollars per month, which is not actually sufficient for uh, to even to survive. But uh, still, uh, I I know I see I can see that uh, I'm seeing that Rohingya people are trying to send their whatever they have. To the to their relatives in Burma or yeah the young generation youth are actually uh, in, standing uh, each other but uh, still that is really really not uh, uh, watchable or it is not seen uh, okay. like uh, I mean to say is, uh, uh, it I is heard uh, yeah I had a news I had a news that a lot of uh, volunteer organization they are trying to create from themselves to help each other. So that way also you can, you know, save your people inside the camp and also help the other side of the border, which will reduce the tension. And uh, this is the, at least uh, uh, you can save some life, right? So yeah. uh, this is the thing that uh, viewers and uh, um, uh, uh, viewers, uh, we are uh, short of time. We have a, a very um, fixed time to go through the uh, this um, uh, session and uh, I will be coming back to thank you for uh, I'm relaying thanks to uh, Mr. Peter and through Mr. Peter I wanted to convey my our wishes and good wishes um, uh, to your community to your camp people and very soon I'll be calling you again with other journalists so that we can more be informed and uh, the world can know that what's really going on uh, beside the uh, regular journalism, uh, we wanted to bring information from the ground. Uh, the, that's why that's why I was very uh, thankful to get uh, Mr. Peter Seifel from that area. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, Mr. Peter. Stay with us till we end. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mehul Kamdar, I wanted to I wanted to come to Mr. Mehul Kamdar. If you can unmute yourself. Um, yes. So what is your final, uh, this is the final closing right now, just within two, three minutes. Like what uh, what we expect, what the uh, normal, uh, normal people of uh, citizens of Pakistan are majority thinking about forming the government. What is their, what is, what is their thinking now? What, what they are assessing, what uh, liking and disliking. Uh, so the impression that I get from the ground is that the public in Pakistan are very eager for a civilian government, number one. Number two, they are also very eager for peaceful relations. And two of the leaders have actually made this sort of comment. The first thing that Nawaz Sharif said when he came back to Pakistan was, he said, I want better relations with India. And before Imran Khan was sent to jail, he gave multiple speeches where he told the people of Pakistan, he said, look at it. Talk to the rest of the world on their own terms. Yeah, go ahead. Pakistan. I, I, he's under, uh, he understands what he's talking about. But they got the lowest number of votes for any large party. So, you know, obviously, the public in Pakistan are not in tune with them. And if in Pakistan, the Tariq Labai Pakistan, 
they were wiped out they have not even got a single seat hafiz said son didn't even get one seat so the uh, appetite in the public of pakistan is for peace it is for a civilian government and it is for democracy whether the military will permit it i don't know it is anybody's guess because you know that thinking is not transparent and what they do is uh, you know anybody knows uh, I, i mean or rather nobody knows so this is my short observation maybe it's not a, a concrete observation but the fact is that the overwhelming majority of the pakistani people seem to want peace that is the impression that i'm getting from multiple sources oh okay. well, currently um, i got a message uh, uh, a young girl being treated in a village house in uh, koeka quick uh, tau uh, after the intense shelling of uh, kotake so quick tau before uh, the aa captured base 9 uh, mr peter i think thank you so much for being that but the thing is this the sad part is she died uh that uh treated girl was died and uh which is happening right now uh let the viewers know that uh, so much thing is going on right now in the border of uh myanmar and bangladesh and also in uh, inside the myanmar majorly and so uh the international community to come up um to reduce this conflict and also international community should uh go for setting up a, a very important region so that non military installation for the human rights as we say like a red cross area is a civilian area and should be safe for the civilians uh mr lagari uh, uh, i wanted to ask you uh, in 2 minutes uh, that like uh, what is the best way of solution uh, forming a government right now in pakistan uh can you unmute please well mr muslim i think our desires our people's desire is one thing but the reality is different yes what well, that that's what i'm asking that what is the reality the real solution the real uh, it comes that it it gets the peaceful uh, you know uh, future in pakistan if there if there were democracy then probably from the 1971 and as up to now the people can run the country not the military can run the country but the problem is the military wants to keep the kashmir issue alive military want to keep all the issues uh, remain the same so they can control it the problem with democracy there is no problem with democracy the solution is this if the military can be separated from the politics which is all uh, like imran khan or even nawaz sharif wanted but that con- this country is not for that purpose from the very first time like the beginning this this country was as used as a buffer state against the soviet union now is military is the problem is like a liability so until they keep this issue they will be continuously run the country it means the- the all the issues which is uh, any in economy in the judiciary in the media or all those things so the desire or the real solution is if the military and get out from the politics then there is a possibility of the solution that maybe the smaller countries can get the, their rights can be negotiated with the uh, center that's the only possibilities but which is uh, uh, as uh, even i want it but the situation is dark and uh, unfortunately there's not much great hope from this country thank you uh thank you so much mr lagari and uh, i think mr um kamdan is uh, uh disconnected and uh, i wanted to say thanks to uh, mr uh, peter saiful and no mr uh, rahul kamdar uh, is here again that's fine uh, mr um, uh, mahul uh, kamdar i give you one minute to close Yes sir uh, I mean I uh, you know I I am a believer in peace I am a believer in democracy and my mother was born and grew up in Pakistan she married my father and came to India uh, in uh, 65 and uh, it is my sincere hope that there will be peace on the other hand when I look at it from a practical standpoint 
uh, I'm afraid that that possibility is less and less likely. So it is unfortunate. I think we will see a lot of extremely terrible violence in the days ahead. And uh, I can only think about the innocent people who will definitely suffer when that happens. It is unfortunate, right. but that is a fact. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Mahul Kamdar, uh, for Thank being you. with us. And uh, I want I wanted to go for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Seifel um, uh, to end uh, uh, this uh, your verse. Right now, uh, as you have uh, shared already a video and a, a, a map picture, but at this moment, uh, I cannot share it because of the technical um, uh, technicality needs in advance to be uh, put into the system. Um, um, anyway, thank you so much, Mr. Peter. Um, any updates comes, please text me. Yeah, as I'm receiving, so right. I, I can see the sound of firing now and probably in a place called, uh, known as a uh, Ponnagan, it is in Kyoto. Also, it is uh, it was a uh, few hours back in uh, uh, under the district of Mangdu, uh, uh, area, which is, which is my uh, village in Mangdu under the Mangdu district. It is called Bolivazer. So it was on fire. So, so things very uh, the situation of the area is very worse. But uh, uh, so the human rights organization must act immediately to save the uh, right. civilian. That's the thing that that's the thing that uh, in the meantime we are looking for the to save the human um, life and make them out of danger. Uh, thank you so much uh, for everyone to be with us. Uh, thanks the viewers and listeners uh, to be with us and uh, we appreciate your uh, patience and uh, we appreciate your time and energy everything for today I really need to take exit. Namaskar. Salam. Adab to everybody. Thank you.